The Framingham Heart Study and other studies have taught us that there are cardiovascular risk factors like obesity, cholesterol levels, and smoking, which can lead to heart attacks and strokes. We have this notion that platelets being one of the most abundant cells in our body might also contribute to disease risk. Their job is really to create clots and heal wounds, but they have a downside, which is if they're too reactive, they can lead to cardiovascular disease. Platelet levels and platelet reactivity are more heritable than things like cholesterol levels. And so we set out on a mission to find the genes that are driving platelets. I'm Dr. Andrew Johnson. I'm a senior investigator in the Laboratory of Hemostasis and Platelet Biology at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. When we started this research, there were very few genes that were highly validated in the field as driving platelet numbers or platelet reactivity. We had the intuition that going to the Framingham Heart Study and others would allow us to get bigger samples. And this really fueled a wave of discovery and now we have dozens and dozens of genes we've been able to validate that contribute to disease risk. By applying a variety of new approaches like sequencing the RNA of platelets in heart attack patients, we learned there are many, many genes that contribute to variability in platelet traits. And a lot of these were unexpected genes. One of the genes that we've discovered is called GRK5. People with a single genetic variant in GRK5 have higher platelet reactivity to something called thrombin, the most potent activator of platelets in the bloodstream. These people are at higher risk for heart attacks as well as blood clots in their lungs. We hypothesize that these people with this GRK5 variant may actually respond better to PAR4 drug therapies, a drug target now in clinical trials for cardiovascular disease prevention. Another finding from the lab has been that platelet reactivity itself in people who are otherwise healthy predicts a future MI or stroke event. We took out the effects of other risk factors and platelet reactivity remained an independent risk factor for future heart attack and stroke. But where we're going next is we really want to understand how platelet reactivity may contribute to other diseases like diabetes and cancer or not. We're enrolling and collecting new data in the oldest participants in the Framingham Heart Study so we can understand how platelets may change through aging. And we're also continuing to expand the diversity of the samples that we study so we can understand how platelets affect all of us.